Hi, welcome to a new Fusion tutorial. This one is about combining multiple camera projections. This is what the result will look like. Usually a camera projection from a single viewpoint allows for a little bit of camera movement. If you want to deviate further, it may become necessary to extend the projection with a second camera. This is the photograph I've used as a starting point. For the projection to work, the lens distortion needs to be removed so straight lines really are straight. For now I have used a tool from the Crocodove plugins. Fusion 6.3 will also include its own lens distortion tool. This is the simple 3D scene. It includes a box and a camera that will be used as a projector. An FBX model of the building would be even better, but the box will have to do for now. You'll notice that I have placed the box pivot onto the bottom right corner. The pivot Y coordinate is minus 0.5 and the object's Y offset position is also 0.5, which places the box exactly onto the floor. This trick is necessary to make the box stay on the ground while it's being scaled. So, let's connect our photo to the camera. By default, no projection is taking place yet. And before we continue, we have to set up the camera with the correct lens and film back. If you don't know the camera model and focal length of your photo, aligning the camera projection will be a frustrating adventure of trial and error. For this photo here, I can take a look at its EXIF data. This one has been taken by a Fuji FinePix and the focal length is 8mm. A bit of googling will quickly turn up the camera's sensor size, which we need to enter into the film back settings in Fusion. The sensor size is specified in millimeters but needs to be converted to inches. Google will help us here as well. I have already entered the required numbers in the camera tool. Next, remove the image plane and enable projection instead. By default, the image is projected as a light, so lighting needs to be enabled in a 3D viewer. Now the fun task of aligning the camera begins. You can either align the box to the camera or the camera to the box. If you are working with a match moved camera track, you will have to move the box and you might even have a point cloud to help you. In this example, however, I'll move the camera. The best workflow is to look through the camera and move it around using a combination of middle mouse click and dragging while holding down the Alt key. Since I have neither scale model nor match moving data, I can set the distance between the camera and the building to whatever I like. The part that takes a little practice is realizing when to try a little bit of C-axis rotation. I have already prepared the alignment earlier. The next step is to switch from light projection to texture projection. The image will disappear since the geometry isn't catching the texture yet. To fix this, add a catcher tool and connect it to the geometry's material input. Now the texture becomes visible, but it will wrap around the whole object and stretch on the sides. To fix this, we will drop another projection onto these artifacts. Navigate the perspective view to a new angle. Then drop a camera from the toolbar onto the 3D viewer. 
This will create a new camera with exactly this point of view. Rename this camera so you know what's going on. Next, render an image from this alternative angle. Add a renderer 3D. Set it to integer if you intend to work in Photoshop and just save a screenshot using the save image option in the viewer's context menu. I have already prepared this earlier. The screenshot will serve as a template to draw some new walls in Photoshop. This is just a quick and dirty example, so I've just used solid colors instead of proper textures. One important thing to take care of, the painted walls should reach beyond the shape of your geometry. This will make sure that edge pixels will still receive full opacity when the picture is projected. The new image is now brought back into Fusion connected to the camera that was used to render the screenshot. Of course, there's no projection going on yet. Disable the camera's image plane and enable camera projection. Now, the image doesn't line up with the geometry. What went wrong? Well, our image is 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The camera, however, was set to a 4 by 3 film back. To fix the projection, we have to change the projection fit method. Height will do it in this case. Then, set the projection to texture if you haven't already and look at the rendered result. <clears throat> That's still not what we were hoping for. The solution lies in the catcher tool. By default it will accumulate multiple projections using the median mode. To layer them using their alpha channels, set the accumulation mode to blend. And there you go. However, the expected result has only shown up because I had already set up the second camera's projector priority earlier. By default it is zero, which is the same as our first camera. This option defines which projection layer goes on top. Just increase it for each new layer and you're done. Well, almost. The other caveat is that you have to use the software renderer. The OpenGL renderer, I have set it to floating point since my graphic card doesn't support 16-bit integer, the OpenGL renderer will always add projections. It can't merge them like the software renderer can. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.